Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, and today we have a very special guest, Jen Whitmore from um, Adventuring the Girl Life podcast, and she also has an amazing business where she helps people that are traveling for work to get healthy and not lose those really, really good habits that we have. So welcome. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be with you girls. Yeah, we are very excited to have you. And what got you started in the kind of arena that you're in that like fitness, but also like fitness for busy, busy, busy people? Yeah. So I've been doing this for quite a while, actually. You know, I played sports in high school and then I got married really young and I just stuck with it. You know, when my daughter was really young, I started working at the gym and I just kind of stayed in it. You know, I never really left after playing sports, lifting weights. I joined the gym to work there so I could also, you know, lose that baby weight that we all love. So I then later in years became a personal trainer. I have taught all kinds of classes. You name it, I've probably taught it. And then I became a personal trainer because I really enjoyed the one-on-one aspect of getting to know people and getting to know their goals personally. So that was just a deeper type of relationship that I enjoyed a lot more than group exercise. So that's where that started. And then I thought, you know what? Like, it's a great idea to start a podcast. And so Adventuring the Girl Life, as you mentioned, is my podcast. And we do talk about all kinds of health and fitness stuff on there. And even though it's called Adventuring the Girl Life, I do feel like that it is for both sexes. But, you know, we don't really talk about a lot of mommy stuff. We talk more about health stuff. And it could be anything from exercising and eating well to doing things like sitting up straight. You know, I actually have an episode about how we sit too much and how that affects us long term. And so there's a whole lot of health related issues that we go over on the podcast. And then my new business that I just started is Road Warrior Wellness Concierge, and that is where I help busy business travelers. My husband got a new job quite a few years ago now, and I noticed him being gone all the time and how it affected him, you know, just jet lag, basically eating the food that was convenient, you know, whatever was available. And a lot of times that's either fast food or pizza because you're working long hours. Um, Sometimes he works overnight. And so obviously in the middle of the morning, there's no food available. And so I just noticed the toll that traveling for work actually takes on so many people. And I started to do a lot of research about it. And that's where Road Warrior Concierge came from because I want to help these people better their life quality because their families need them. You know, for the most part, the people that are traveling for business, they are the breadwinners of the family. Their job is not going to change. It's something that they have to do to provide for their family and they are the most unhealthy. And so I want to work on helping them change that because, you know, their family is going to want them around for a long time. So that's what we're working on with Road Warrior. That is awesome. I love that. And I think it's one of those things where people take a job and the travel aspect of that job, if they, if it's, if it's like an upfront thing, they're really excited about it, you know, like yeah. to travel to this city and that city and that city. And then after, you know, that kind of newness wears off, which does with every job, but after that newness wears off, you realize that traveling is actually a lot of work. And logistically, like when you think about when you travel for vacation, it is like eating out all the time because you don't have access to a kitchen and yeah. You know, all of those things. So I think it's awesome that you're trying to help people to live a better, healthier lifestyle while they're traveling. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And you mentioned vacation. That is something of a different mindset. You know, I do feel like the way that our society is moving forward at this point is people 
when they go on vacation, they still have that vacation mindset. You know, they still want to unplug. They still want to relax. They want to drink. They want to eat. They want to enjoy the food of wherever they're going. But at the same time, we are a lot more conscious now. You know, we're not just engorging ourselves and having a free for all. Even if we are on vacation, we're still paying a lot more attention to the food that we're consuming nowadays because nobody wants to come home after vacation 10 pounds heavier. You know, oh, I've enjoyed myself, but now that I'm home, I feel awful. Yeah. And so even though that's a different mindset, we are becoming more conscious. And so that's really a lot different than the business traveler because they travel all the time and they can't afford to have that business mindset. And so that's what we're working on with them is personal exercise plans, finding the food that they need for themselves personally, you know, based on where they're going. And then, you know, for example, somebody who travels is going to be sitting a lot. I mentioned that earlier as the podcast episode, you know, like you said, you're just exhausted from traveling all the time because it is hard work. You go to the airport and you sit and then you get on your airplane and you sit and then you go to your meeting after you get off your airplane and you sit and then you've worked this long day doing nothing but sitting and you go back to your hotel and you sit yeah. to go to sleep because you're trying to unwind and you're just exhausted from literally doing nothing but sitting. And you're like, how does this happen? I haven't done anything all day, but it is, it's very exhausting. Yeah. Now, curious about what your kind of business model does. Like, so what do you do individual one-on-one -on -one coaching and develop plans specifically for that business traveler? Do you already have pre, you know, established plans, kind of curious as to how that works. Yeah. So again, this is Road Warrior Wellness Concierge. We are a full concierge service. Now there are different levels of packages depending on what the person wants, but it is customized to the person. And the reason that that is, is because everybody's different. And you can go anywhere on the internet and buy a one-off program. I even have one that I sell. Um, that is a 10 week workout program, but it's not customized to you. You know, what if you have dietary restrictions that you need paid attention to? You know, what if you have a bad knee or a weak back or previous shoulder injury, something, none of those things are going to help you because you're not going to be able to do them. And so when I have a client come to me, they make an appointment, they fill out like a basic questionnaire, you know, name, email, phone number. And then once we chat on the phone, I get to know them and figure out what they need specifically. And then we work to build their itinerary. That's what we call them is their plans is a, um, a wellness itinerary for their travel. And we also have this accountability add-on that's available. So depending on, like I said, what they want, we can do food, we can do exercise, and then we have the accountability option where we can help them along the way. So for example, you might have a 30 minute lunch break, but by the time you try to get into your car and go somewhere, then that's not enough time to eat. Mm -hmm. Or if you are ordering your food at 12 and it's going to take 20 minutes to get there, now you've got 10 minutes to eat before you have to go back in. That's just not a healthy option. You know, you're shoving food down your face as fast as possible, or you're missing that window of time and you're just not eating at all, which I know a lot of people do. They just completely work through lunch. Yeah. And this is just one example of what can happen. And so with the accountability piece, what we do is we offer them like a text message. It's 1130. This is a great time for you to pick from your preconceived list that we have made you and call them and order it now. Because of course, you can always use, you know, Uber Eats, Postmates, whatever it is to have it delivered, but you're just aware, you're having that conscious message come through of saying, hey, you know, now's the time so that you're not missing that. And then you're not scrolling through all of the meal choices that are out there. Oh, well, there's 15, 20 choices. No, you've got three choices mm -hmm. that you can choose from that are within what your goals are that you can choose from to pick and now's the time to do it. So it's very customized to each person. That's so cool. Like to know that like when they get to their hotel room, they don't have to think about that too. And they mm -hmm. can still focus on work or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And their food's ready for them. It's available. Yeah. That is amazing. That's a great idea. Now, do you find your clients being um, mainly women or is it 
men, women, everybody? Or um, yeah, so we do have women, for sure. Women do travel for business. But at this point in time, the clientele is mainly men because I think the majority of business travelers are men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very curious. Okay, cool. So one thing that I always like to ask everyone on the podcast is tell us about your background in fitness and, and all of that. And how did you segue into working at home? And what was your kind of motivation and reason for doing that? I always like to give this backstory for everyone because all everyone that listens to this podcast is pretty much moms and they are striving to either work from home or build their own business or they already are doing those things. So, yeah. So again, I've been in fitness for a long time. I, I really loved it. That's why I stuck with it. It was something that was really important to me just because I think the bottom line is that I really just want to age well. And that comes down to taking care of my body and illness. You know, I'm like, I can't predict my future, but I'm going to do everything in my present that I can to be healthy so that I hopefully can avoid illness as I age. And so that's one of the main reasons that I stuck with something like this. And so my parents, they also have owned their own business for 20 plus years. And so I think I had that entrepreneurial background from the beginning. And I always wanted to own my own business just because for no other reason than I didn't want to work for anybody else. I didn't really feel like somebody telling me when I could go to lunch and how much money I was allowed to make. And so I always wanted to work for myself because even if I was working, I was doing it for me and for my family. So once I became a personal trainer, then I realized how much more money I could actually make on my own. And so I started training at home and that was where we started. But then um, I know you and I had talked previously off mic about my miscarriages. I have two children currently. And then my husband and I tried three times to have a third child. And so because they were all like second trimester miscarriages, you get to that point, And like you said, you have so many moms that listen to this podcast. Once you get to that point, like you're over the sickness you know, you've been waiting this long to find out what you're having and you know all of those things that come with it. You know, you're picking out baby outfits. You're already doing all of the things like you're getting ready to have a baby yeah. and then you lose it and all of those things go away. And so after my first miscarriage, we were super sad, but it was sort of like, well, it happens to people, you know, you don't ever think it's going to happen to you, but when it does, you know, we were just sort of like, oh, bummer, you know, like we were sad, but it is what it is. It happens. Yeah. And then after the second one is sort of when I lost it, I kind of went way deep inside my own mind, I guess there for a long time. It took me a very, very long time to get over it. I had a lot of anxiety that I had to deal with and it lasted for a long time, even through my third miscarriage, because we weren't trying to get pregnant that third time because I didn't feel like I was in a good place, but it was just sort of an accident. And I think that I sort of mentally shut myself off at that point. And so when we were at the doctor's office finding out that we had lost our third baby, I was just kind of like numb. You know what I mean? Like it was a very hard time. And at this point, it's been about four years. And so I would like to say that I am past the grief stage of that. Like I still have my ultrasound pictures. I hung them up with all of our other family pictures. And I know some people might think that's weird, but that's the only pictures that I have of my children. And I think that they were part of our family. Mm -hmm. And so once we got through that, then I finally made that decision of you have that like that trigger in your life, whatever that trigger is, you know, maybe it's a family member that dies or maybe you get into a car accident or whatever your trigger is. That was my trigger. And I knew that I needed to do something. And so I started working a lot more on the personal training business and my husband got a new job. And then I saw him traveling because technically he wasn't supposed to travel at all with this job. And he's just so darn good at what he does. <laughs> you need him everywhere, right? Yeah, they changed that on us. And so I started being at home by myself a lot more, having to do all the things with the kids. And I was already doing that. But you know, it's a big difference when you're doing it by yourself, when you're used to doing it with two adults. 
And so that's where the idea for Road Warrior Wellness Concierge came from because he was gone a lot and I was just noticing how that was affecting him and a lot of other people that we know who travel. So that's where the idea came from, but that was initially the trigger that said, okay, you know, now's the time because you're not promised tomorrow. Nobody is. So start working towards something that you want. Well, I thank you very much for sharing something that's so personal and painful and all of those things. And I'm really happy to hear that, you know, you've worked through that grief. Thank you. A lot of people maybe kind of get stuck in that mode. And the fact that you've used that and kind of catapulted yourself forward is amazing. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I just think there was some point that triggered me to say, I don't want to live like this anymore. You know, it, it did take me a very long time. I'm talking like six plus months to even feel better and then even longer to be okay. Yeah. And so I think that's something everybody's entitled to their grief. You know, there's no limit on how long that you grieve, but there was that triggering point where I was like, okay, I have two kids at home. You know, I'm like, my other ones are not there, but I still do have two that I have to take care of. And I don't want to be like a shell of a person and I don't want to have a shell of a life or even a marriage. And so it was that point where, okay, get, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, do something change, move forward. Yeah. And the fact that you're helping people through that or, you know, because of that, I guess, um, yeah. is amazing. So I commend Thanks. you and, uh, yeah, that's awesome. So what is the biggest thing that's going on in your business right now? Like with, um, with, yeah, right now we are marketing. That's what we're doing. So like I said, this is still really brand new. We've got a lot of our back end work done. We are building the itineraries, but mainly we are in the marketing phase, trying to get the word out on how we do this, why we do this and why you need it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So where can people find you or like, where can people learn more about it? Absolutely. So our website is rwtravelswell.com and everything on social is under Jen Whitmore training still. So that may change in the future, but because my personal training business is Jen Whitmore training, that's where everything on social media still is. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Well, you can find Jen at those places. Now I have a question for you about, I work from home and a lot of people that are listening might work from home. Some of them might travel for business. Some of them might just commute a short commute. But do you have any tips that we can all kind of incorporate into our daily life? I know you're talking about sitting and I sit like way too much. <laughs> so that's all do, one of yeah. them. But is there, are there any tips that you can offer us that really give us some actionable things that, okay, we can just do these three things this week and we're going to feel better by like next week, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. So I would say something, even if you do have a small commute, listen to something uplifting or informational in your car. Obviously, I would love to encourage you to listen to my podcast, Adventuring the Girl Life, but at least something that is positive. You want that input. So that would be number one. Number two would be when you wake up in the morning, don't immediately go to that input of information, the radio, podcast, your phone whatever it is, don't immediately start inputting. Just sit, even if it's, you know, you don't have time to sit for five minutes, you've got to get up and get these kids to school and whatever. Even if you take a shower in silence, we are so on all the time that we don't ever have a chance to actually just be with ourselves because it's constantly going. And so I would say if you can take that morning time, five to 15 minutes, and just be quiet, it will help your sanity a lot. And then other than that, I would say healthy diet and exercise. And I know that that is not necessarily a popular thing. Everybody wants to do the diet. You know, they want to do keto. That's the most popular. You know, they want to do something that's really quick and easy. And life just isn't like that. So exercise and eat well, it will help you in the long run. Yeah. Okay. Those are great tips. And I really struggle with number two because yeah. I'm one of those people that I can't shut my mind off. 
Mm-hmm. So when I am in silence, my mind is just like racing. So I use those podcasts and things like that to kind of like shut my mind off, if that makes uh-huh. sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do struggle with that one, but it's funny because I had a doctor's appointment yesterday morning and I decided that I wasn't going to listen to anything. I was had the radio off. Like it was only like five minutes, 10 minutes from my house, but that was so quiet. <laughs> it was like the most quiet drive I've ever had. I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is so quiet. I could like hear a pin drop. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So it's funny that you say that. Cause that literally, I just had that experience yesterday where I forced myself to like have my own like thoughts, but yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like that one. I need to practice that more. Yeah. Well, like you said, even if you're somebody, cause I do that too. Even if your mind is racing, the more and more you do it, the more and more it will slow down. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with it racing. You've got a lot of things that you're thinking about, but it will allow you, like it will allow your consciousness to come through instead of being told what to think at all time by the TV, by the radio, instead of being told what to think, you are thinking on your own. So that in itself is just calming sometimes. Yeah. And I think we all need that little tiny bit of peace that we can get wherever we can get it. Absolutely. (laughs) At least from a mom's perspective and also Oh yes. (laughs) Like when you add on the business owner thing and then all of that stuff just like kind of adds a whole bunch of weight on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I agree a hundred percent. So one final question that I have for you is what is your favorite thing about being able to work from home and be around your kids? Yeah, again, that's just total like control of time. And that is, I would say easier said than done, of course, because I was just talking to a friend of mine recently about how many things we have going on this fall. We literally have something one to two to three things going on Monday through Friday evenings, like every single day of the week. But that's just the season of life that we're in right now. And that's fine. But otherwise, I don't get up and go to work when somebody tells me to. You know, I'm like, I don't take a lunch break when somebody tells me to. I don't have to pay a babysitter in the evenings because my kids get off at three and I don't get off work until five. So just the benefit of, you know, it's not all, you know, rainbows and unicorns because obviously money comes in you know, to that equation. So sometimes you just got to do what you've got to do. But working from home is definitely, I set my own hours. Usually like 2.30 is when I close my computer for the day. And that is now family time. And if there's something that's really important that I have to do later, I wait until they go to bed. Yeah. Um, because we all understand we're never going to get that time back. And that's important. Yeah. And so working for yourself, that makes a big difference. Awesome. I really liked what you said. And I even wrote it down because I was like, wow, I've never heard it put that way before, but it like really resonated with me. You didn't want someone to tell you how much money you were allowed to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, man, that is like so true. You know, like there's no limit when you work for yourself other than what you kind of limit yourself to. Yes. Um, And you know, that kind of capability thing, but um, that was really powerful. And I think that that is just a kind of a mind blower uh, of a statement there. So that's awesome. Well, good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I want to thank you for uh, being on the show. And I think you have provided some tremendous value for our audience. And I can't wait to see as your business grows, what is going to be happening. And if you are a traveling mom or your husband travels for work or your friend or your mom or your sister, anybody that you know travels for work, definitely reach out to Jen and she can help them to live their best healthy lifestyle while traveling. So awesome. Very good. Thank you so much, Amanda. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by Google My Business Management Services from The Determined Mom. We provide quality Google My Business Management to increase business visibility, ranking, and customer leads. A properly managed Google My Business profile is currently the key to rising to the top three of Google search results and will remain that way as long as Google is displaying Google My Business results first. Don't let your competitors hang out at the top, getting all of the clients searching for your services when you should be there. Sign up for Google My Business Management Services today at thedeterminedmom.com forward slash Google.